Welcome, everyone. We will begin with a song this morning. <clears throat> Christ be beside me. Christ be before me. Christ be behind me. King of my heart. Christ be within me. Christ be below me. Christ be above me. Never to part. Christ on my right hand. Christ on my left hand, Christ all around me, shield in the strife. Christ in my sleeping, Christ in my sitting, Christ in my rising. Christ be in all hearts, thinking about me. Christ be on all tongues, telling of me. Christ be the vision in eyes that see me, in ears that hear me. Christ ever be. Good morning, everyone. Those here present and those joining us on live stream, we are happy to have you all with us on this feast of St. Augustine, the great Augustine. I say Augustine, but others pronounce Augustine. When I was, uh, well, you know, it's the, the city is Augustine. And uh, when I was doing some research, the one who was speaking always said Augustine. So now I don't know if I'm right with Augustine or with, if it's Augustine. We'll, we'll continue with Augustine. Augustine <coughs> is said to be the second most important theological writer since St. Paul for the Western Church. That's the type of influence he had in the church. So we begin our Eucharist this morning in the name of the Father, of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, as we gather around the table of the Lord, we take a moment to examine our conscience, asking God for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are the wisdom of your saints. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the glory of your elect. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Renew in your church, we pray, O Lord, the spirit with which you endowed your bishop, St. Augustine, that filled with the same spirit, we may thirst for you, the sole fount of true wisdom, and seek you, the author of heavenly love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, God did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, 
not with the wisdom of human eloquence, so that the cross of Christ might not be empty of its meaning. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the learning of the learned I will set aside. Where is the wise one? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made the wisdom of the world foolish? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not come to know God through wisdom, it was the will of God through the foolishness of the proclamation to save those who have faith. For Jews demand signs, Greeks look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jew and foolishness to Gentile. But to those who are called Jews and Greeks alike, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Exalt you just in the Lord. Praise from the upright is fitting. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp when that string lyre chant his praises. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. For upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right of the kindness of the Lord. The earth is full. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. The Lord brings to naught the plans of nations. He foils the design of people. But the plan of the Lord stands forever, the design of his heart through all generation. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Vigilant at all time and pray that you may have the strength to stand before the Son of Man. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them. But the wise brought flasks of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, for there may not be enough for us and you. 
Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. We have an interesting gospel passage for our consideration today. It's a gospel passage that sort of challenges all of us. Because it speaks to us of our life's journey and what awaits us at the end of this journey, namely the wedding banquet. We also are waiting for the bridegroom. And as we continue our way through life, waiting for the bridegroom, we find ourselves, of course, assailed by all kind of problems and difficulties that sort of tend to perhaps stray us. Here in this particular parable, the Lord speaks of ten young women, virgins, Five, he said, were wise, and five, not so much so. The five wise ones prepared for that long await. The lamps that we speak of are the virtues that we bring with us when we meet the bridegroom. These lamps are what permit us to enter into the wedding chamber. What are these lit lamps? Well, we could condense them into the cardinal virtues. Hope, love. We ask the Lord to give us that sense of hope and of love. Here's another one. Faith, faith. Uh, how could I forget faith? <laughs> it's tough to get old. Yes, faith, hope, and love. These are, if you want, the, the main areas that we need to work on while we are here. If we want our lamps to be lit when we enter into the kingdom, we need those virtues. And... Here is the key to all of this. Those virtues cannot be given to anyone else. They are personal. We are the ones who develop those virtues in our lives. Now, of course, we can be the example of those virtues for others. We can encourage others to develop those virtues in their own lives. But in the long run, we have the responsibility of developing those virtues. And that is why, in this particular parable, when the unwise young ladies ask the others for some of their oil, they're told, no, we can't share. You can't give the virtues to others. You enter into that kingdom with the personal development of these virtues. We celebrate today the Feast of St. Augustine. Mentioned at the beginning that many theologians consider him the most important influence on the Western Church after St. Paul. Yesterday we celebrated the Feast of his mother, Monica, who had a lot to do with the conversion of Augustine. 
Augustine wasn't converted until he was in his late 20s, 28, 27, 28. Through the influence of his mother, who was certainly one of those wise ladies who practiced the virtues that we're talking about today and was a tremendous example for her son, even if he didn't seem to be much influenced by that. We're living at a time of tremendous political, social, and moral corruption. And unfortunately, Augustine, who had been extremely well educated, he went to the leading university of Carthage. He was from North Africa, which was a Roman province at that time. His parents sent him to one of the best schools in, of the day in that area, a little bit like going to Harvard today or to Yale, one of those universities. And so he had received a, a very, very good education, and he himself was an extremely intelligent person. Educated in philosophy, of course, and his specialty was rhetoric, which was considered one of the great uh, disciplines of the day. That is why his writings became so influential. The man knew how to compose a sentence and how to get an idea across in such a way that others could understand and would be drawn to it. He knew how to use words. And that was certainly his strength. Augustine was converted at the age of 28 No, no, no. At the age of 33. Am I right or am I wrong? I'm wrong. Go back to 28. 28. No, 32. Okay, we got 28, 32, 33. Do I hear any? I'm going to stick. I'm going to stick with 33. Converted at the age of 33, was ordained priest at the age of 36, and made bishop at the age of 41. Which goes to show that the early church really understood the power that this man represented. And also, once converted, the dedication that he brought to his understanding of Christianity. We still have much of his writings today, although he lived in the fourth century. We still have much of his writings today because he was very careful to catalog everything. Not only that, but he also founded a community, a community of monks uh, that helped him to run his diocese of Tagaste, which again was in northern Africa. Um, that, that community still exists today and is still quite influential in the church. The Augustinians, he's the one who founded that particular uh, community. All this to say that Augustine, once he understood the importance of Christianity and what that meant for his life, he gave himself completely to it. He was one of those wise persons who took his faith seriously and certainly entered into the wedding feast of the bridegroom with a brightly lit lamp. He's one of the major doctors of the Western Church. My brothers and sisters, that's the challenge that's given to us. We can't say, oh, it's too late for me. I'm too old. I can't change. It's not true. If we are caught by an idea, then we can fulfill what that idea is challenging us to. And the idea I'm speaking of 
is to become genuine disciples of the Lord Jesus. That is what Augustine understood. And that is what Augustine struggled to develop during the rest of his life after his conversion. And going through his writings, we come to see how very successful he was in that never excused himself for his past life. In fact, bemoaned it quite a bit as he got on in age. One of these, if only if I had known sooner. If only I had known sooner. And so all of us are challenged to get to know the Lord Jesus. And we get to know him by practicing those virtues of faith, of charity, and of hope. We bring before the Lord our cares and concerns as well as the cares and concerns of the church. For the church, that she may remain in Jesus, held fast in him by the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world's power powerful ones, that they may learn the ways of servant leadership seeking God's command in their decision and policies, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who make foolish decisions in life may be given wisdom from the Holy Spirit and so feel the freedom to change their life's direction, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those whose lives have become self-centered and without meaning may discover, like St. Augustine, the goodness and beauty of God and know that it's never too late to love God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in need of the Lord's healing, including David Jarrett, Dr. Emilio Alfonso, Adrian Gonzalez, Anne Harvey, Don Murphy, Ken McManus, and Lucy Rampey, and those in our book of prayers request, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Louis Leone, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we want to remember, of course, all those who are suffering from the damages of Hurricane Laura and those who are still in the path of that, what has become now, I think, a tropical storm, that the Lord may be with them, may be their strength and their courage. For all of them, we pray to the Lord. And together we pray the prayer to Mary, during this time of pandemic. O oh Mary, health of the sick, you always shine on our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you. You know what we need, and we are sure you will provide, so that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows, leading us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. And our offertory hymn will be the servant song, the servant song. Will you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you let's die. My goodness, we have received the bread we offer you. We are pilgrims. Yes. 
are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Celebrating the memorial of our salvation, we humbly beseech your mercy, O Lord, that this sacrament of your loving kindness may be for us the sign of unity and the bond of charity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Augustine, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by the words of, his, of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of God. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of change. 
charity together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, and the leaders of your church everywhere. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all. And with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, St. Augustine, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us try to share a sign of that peace with one another. Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. 
I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Body of Christ. 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 Thus says the Lord, you have but one teacher, the Christ, and you are all brothers and sisters. Let us pray. May partaking of Christ's table sanctify us, we pray, O Lord, that being made members of his body, we may become what we have received. Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go to proclaim the good news. Do have a wonderful day. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind. Now
fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear. The hour I first believed. My chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing. Amazing grace.